generally when you're naming captains of a team, which is how I consider lead software engineers as well, you want someone who can face adversity without letting it get to them. And I think that's something that you definitely have to practice. And the reason being is that as a tech lead, regardless of whether or not you're a manager of the engineers, you're a technical leader at the company. And the way you react to adversity is the way all the other engineers are going to react to adversity as well. We wanted to pick your brain on transitioning into a tech lead or a lead software engineering role from the role of, say, a high-performing software engineer. So why don't we go ahead and start with your perspective on this and understanding for how to know if you want to be in a tech lead role. Yeah, definitely. This is an, a really interesting topic, actually, because a lot of engineers ask me this question, both you know, at my own company and colleagues that I've worked with in the past. It's interesting because I think people have this idea of what a tech lead is and what they do every day, but don't necessarily have that hands-on grasp of what's actually going on in the daily responsibilities that a tech lead has. I think you can ask yourself a few questions here. Do you like high-level architecture over granular code? Do you like writing detailed plans? How do you feel about writing tickets with product managers versus digesting those tickets and writing code against those tickets? Um, so I think there's a, a general kind of misconception about tech leads are just architects that are writing code, you know, 60% of the time, which it, it really depends on what type of tech lead you are. And I think we can, we can talk about that a little bit more as well. Cool. Well, let's dive deeper then. So how do you get the experience that you need in order to know if it's something that you like? Yeah, my, my recommendation there is to just ask your manager for a very small project to own. It's really hard to know if you're going to like being a lead engineer or a tech lead without having some sort of firsthand experience because there are some things that kind of take you by surprise. Most often when I have new tech leads um, working on my engineering teams, they often ask, hey, I'm not coding more than 10% of my time. Is this normal? And I say, yeah, that's, that's normal. Um, your job is really to make sure that the projects that we're doing are going according to plan and that we're building really sound architecture around some of those things. So I think just dipping your feet in and getting your toes wet without having a lot to, to bite off or uh, a larger responsibility is a, is a great way to kind of gauge whether or not you like it. Yeah, it's, um, it leads to the next question and point. So they, what would you describe as some of the common pitfalls during this transition? Yeah. So one of them is people realize that they like coding more than they like managing projects. Um, and they say, wait, I don't, I don't really like this anymore. And then there are some other things um, in that realm as well. That's like dealing with adversity. I think there are a lot of different interesting personalities that you can have on an engineering team. And sometimes leads don't know how to interact with those different personalities. It's different going from someone who's just writing code and collaborating with engineers to jumping in as like this figurehead that needs to shepherd the project through to completion and make sure people are implementing things in a sound way architecturally. Um, and then on top of that, dealing with cross-functional stakeholders, that can be new to a lot of people as well and explaining why you're making the decisions you're making. And then also negotiating with different business stakeholders on like the priority of different things and different projects and, and that nature. What would you say are the different types of tech lead roles that are out there today? Yeah, you can really split them into two different taxonomies. One of them is the technical architect kind of track with a little bit of project management and stakeholder management built into it. And these are leads who are going to be leading projects, making sure things are on track, but not actually managing people. And then you have like tech lead managers, which I find in startups is a little bit more common since you're a little bit more strapped for capital. Um, you don't have the, the capital to have an engineering manager and a tech lead for every single scrum team or team of engineers working on a specific product. And in addition to this non-managerial role, 
the tech lead manager is also managing all of those engineers and dealing with their interpersonal problems and, and any of those personal issues you would generally find an engineering manager specializing in. And that can be pretty rough sometimes, depending on how many engineers you have on your team. Um, it's a lot to, to bite off there. So I would say like, that's a no, another whole realm that I haven't really touched on. Um, if you find yourself in a company where the tech leads are also managers, I consider those two very different skill sets. Sometimes people have both and sometimes people like both, but oftentimes the people who love, you know, developing engineers and seeing them progress and things like that aren't the same people who are going to like the same style of work as going deep on a problem and expanding the system in a specific way. They're generally two kinds of different career tracks. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think we've seen, um, you know, it be defined differently based on what stage the startup is in itself, right? Because there's certain times when uh, even, a, you know, call it a startup that's under 10 employees in headcount, maybe don't even have a CTO in place. And they might not need the CTO, they might actually need more of like a VP of engineering. But that VP of engineering is probably actually more of a hands on lead engineer because they're not necessarily at the point where they're managing multiple resources like a traditional VP of engineering might be doing in a 50 to 75 person startup. So um, really understanding the different roles as a startup progresses through their different stages of their life cycle, I think is is an interesting uh, concept as well. Um, Yeah, definitely. I've seen that role also titled as like founding engineer as well. So if you see founding engineer, it generally means you're either the first engineer or you're the first kind of lead engineer. So you're really not the CTO, but you're driving all of those decisions as well. So that can also be a little bit more than people expect for sure. That's helpful. So what would you say are some of the intangible requirements of the role that may not be so obvious? Yes. So I think of these the same way I would think of an athletic team, like a sports team or something. Generally, when you're naming captains of a team, which is how I consider lead software engineers as well, you want someone who can face adversity without letting it get to them. And I think that's something that you definitely have to practice. And the reason being is that as a tech lead, regardless of whether or not you're a manager of the engineers, you're a technical leader at the company. And the way you react to adversity is the way all the other engineers are going to react to adversity as well. So it's something you really need to work at. And I would say that's probably the biggest intangible. And then, you know, practicing organization, detail orientedness, things like that. But I think the leadership aspects are much more important in that factor. And it's not necessarily something you think about when you're jumping into the role, but the way you react to stimuli will definitely impact the rest of the engineering team, regardless of whether or not you're their manager, um, because they look to you for that inspiration and that leadership. Excellent. Well, this has been a really helpful insight. I'm really happy that you were able to participate, Mehmet. I think this will be really valuable to the audience members that are viewing this. And so I just want to say thank you. And, uh, I uh, appreciate your time. Likewise, I appreciate your time as well. Um, it's been a pleasure and uh, love to be part of this Hatchpad community and looking forward to some of the other talks that you guys have scheduled. Excellent. Well, if you all liked this insight, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future updates.